Hello everyone, my name is Nashir Popovich and I will be presenting on using administrative prescription data to estimate the number of persons on HIV antiretroviral treatment in Canada. I would first like to thank the scientific community for the opportunity to present during these unprecedented times. In the past two years, I've been an employee of the Public Health Agency of Canada and have no conflicts of interest to disclose. Estimating the number of people on antiretroviral treatment for HIV is a critical component to measuring the second of the 90-90-90 targets for eliminating HIV and AIDS as public health threats. In Canada, a comprehensive data source for all HIV-positive persons on ART does not exist. The current national second 90 estimates developed by the provinces and territories and summarized by the Public Health Agency of Canada combine data from various sources. This could include, for example, data from provincial clinical databases or prescription databases, or a combination, depending on the jurisdiction. Our team is always looking for other data sources to corroborate existing estimates, to help demonstrate validity, and to confirm existing methodologies. The Public Health Agency of Canada purchased aggregate data from IQVIA, a private company that holds pharmaceutical data, to corroborate current estimates of the number of people on ART. I will present to you the estimated number of people on treatment for HIV in eight Canadian provinces based on dispensation data from approximately 6,000 retail pharmacies across Canada. IQVIA estimated the number of persons on ART using their geographical prescription monitor data set and a standardized proprietary algorithm to project patient counts at the provincial level by inferred indication, in this case ART for HIV. Dispensation data provided to IQVIA is de-identified, however it can be linked for the same person using anonymous identifiers, allowing for counts of unique individuals. Many of the antiretroviral medications for HIV are also used for a variety of purposes, including post-exposure prophylaxis, pre-exposure prophylaxis, and hepatitis B virus treatment. However, since IQVIA does not collect data on indication, an algorithm was developed to assign this information to each individual. The algorithm used for this analysis was adopted from a previously validated algorithm by the U.S. Center for Disease Control and adapted to fit the Canadian context based on lessons learned from colleagues in Ontario who had completed this analysis for their jurisdiction. As I mentioned, data included in these estimates are from eight Canadian provinces. Data are not available from British Columbia, Alberta, and the territories. This is the algorithm we used to identify a person who should be considered as being on ART. The starting point was any person aged older than two months with at least one prescri prescription dispensed for ART. We provided IQVIA with a list of drugs to be included. We then excluded people who had been prescribed one of the identified specific antiretroviral drugs alone, shown on the top right hand box, as these could have been used to treat hepatitis B virus infection. This left people on antiretrovirals for HIV treatment, PrEP, or PEP. To exclude for possible PEP, we removed those who had been prescribed ART for 30 days or less and who had no other ART within six months. To exclude for possible PrEP, we removed those who were prescribed TDF, FTC, and no other antiretroviral for three months. The remaining individuals were presumed to be on ART for HIV. Like any data source, this one comes with its own set of limitations. Only drugs dispensed from retail community pharmacies are included. These data do not include hospital dispensations, those provided at no cost, and internet pharmacy purchases. As previously mentioned, IQVIA estimates patient counts projected from a sample of pharmacies in Canada. Patient counts from, our, from participating pharmacies are projected to the whole population of each province by IQVIA, and the weighting methods and algorithm used to project dispensations are proprietary. It is possible that this sampling method could result in either an over or under estimate. Dispensation data does not include information on medical indication, and therefore the algorithm I just described was used to assign treatment indication to each dispensation. It is possible that some dispensations were misclassified and could result in an under or over estimate of the number of projected patient counts. Lastly, the estimates are based on the number of prescriptions dispensed, and not all dispensed drugs are consumed. It is not possible to determine the quantity of prescribed medication that is not consumed. From this figure, we can see that the number of people on HIV antiretroviral treatment increased every year. 
The biggest increase from 2015 to 2016 likely echoed Canadian HIV treatment, care, and support guidelines, where ART should be offered to all HIV-infected individuals regardless of their CD4 count. We used IQVIA data to corroborate the number of people on treatment that we estimated for the year 2016. The estimated number of persons on ART from eight provinces using IQVIA data was 32,260. Since IQVIA data did not include Alberta, British Columbia, and the, and the territories, we removed the estimated treatment number from these jurisdictions from our national estimates. When these jurisdictions were removed, the 2016 estimate was 31,976. As you can see, these two estimates are very close, a difference of less than 300 individuals. An additional benefit of using this data source is that we were able to break down the estimated number of people on treatment by a few demographic characteristics. This is not something that we have been able to, to do within the national HIV estimates since the data sources and methods may differ across jurisdictions. You can see from this graph that while males made up more than three quarters of individuals on HIV treatment, the estimated number of individuals on treatment increased in both males and females over the five year period. Females accounted for approximately 20% of individuals on ART between 2014 and 2018. This is slightly lower than the proportion of females within the national incidence and prevalence estimates for the year 2016, which was 23%. This proportion was also lower than the number of reported cases among females for the past 15 to 20 years from national HIV surveillance data, which was around 25%. When we look at the results by age group, Persons aged 46 to 55 years represented the highest number of individuals on ART and also the highest proportion among all those on ART. This was consistent over the five-year period. Between 2014 and 2018, the estimated number of individuals on HIV treatment increased in all age categories. However, the greatest relative increase was observed among the younger age categories. When broken down by age group and sex, there were differences between males and females. Approximately 60% of females on ART were between 36 and 55 years of age. And among females, the greatest relative increase was among those aged 15 to 17 and 18 to 24 years. Males estimated to be on ART tended to be a bit older than females, as almost 60% of males on ART were aged between 46 and 64 years. However, similar to females, the greatest relative increase in the number of males on treatment was among those aged 18 to 24 years. Approximately half of the estimated persons on ART were prescribed medication by a primary care provider and just under one quarter by infectious disease specialists. This trend was consistent over the five year period. In terms of payer type, Around 65% of estimated persons on ART cover the cost of the prescription through public health insurance and a very small proportion paid by cash. This trend was consistent over the five year period. It's important to note here that there's no follow up data to know if those prescriptions paid by cash were reimbursed by public or private insurance. To summarize, Data estimated by IQVIA on the number of persons on ART for HIV corroborated the treatment data from provinces and territories used in the national estimates process for the year 2016. An administrative data set like the one from IQVIA could be useful for constructing second 90 estimates by subpopulations such as age group and sex. Sensitivity analysis using provincial prescription databases has been completed in a few provinces. These data have not been shown here. And these analyses show close alignment with IQVIA projected patient counts in some jurisdictions. Additional sensitivity analyses over time by all provinces and by demographic characteristics would help to validate this additional data source. Lastly, an administrative data set such as the one presented today was a useful validation tool for our existing methods for estimating progress against established targets. These types of data sets could be used in provinces and territories or other country where treatment data are not available and also to estimate progress towards treatment targets for other diseases such as hepatitis. Thank you.